Hi, welcome to Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose and this is Joe Costello. On previous shows, we've talked about the importance of getting regular physicals and blood work, both of which are useful tools for the early detection of health issues and potential disease. Any problems that are detected should be discussed with your doctor and corrective steps should be taken. But doctors routinely prescribe drugs for common conditions such as high cholesterol. But are there safe and effective alternatives to a lifetime of drug prescriptions? Stay tuned for the next half hour and you're going to find out. Joining us to discuss this topic is Dr. Terry Smith. Dr. Smith is a chiropractor, nutritionist, and a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Mm -hmm. He's, by the way, he's a regular, and we certainly do love having him on. He's helped many clients resolve common diet and health issues by focusing on applying the most effective treatment techniques designed around their unique bodies. In fact, he'll be showing us some of the results he's helped clients achieve. So you have actual documentable results that you have helped through a holistic approach. We have documented evidence on natural you know vitamins and minerals making the same or better effects than sometimes prescription drugs without the side effects wow well Amazing. let's set the stage here so <clears throat> you have a client come into your you have a patient come into your office mm -hmm. you do a blood work similar that that's scenario similar to if they were in a medical doctor's same office blood work. Same. goes to a qualified lab mm -hmm. okay the results come back now i notice on your blood test here you have a range that you're not going to see. You call it the healthy range. Mm -hmm. And then next to that, there's a column called the clinical range. I'm yes, assuming sir. that the clinical range is what the medical community puts out as, a, as by and large as saying these are normal ranges. Yeah. Okay. The healthy range is where you think it, where you really like to see that I'd range. I'd like to see somebody in this health, and then there's like kind of a yellow, kind of not healthy but not diseased yet. Okay. And then when we finally hit the end of the clinical range, that's when the medical doctors will say, you've got a problem and you need a, a drug to fix this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you look at these lab results, and then your approach from there is to take the whole person and start looking at this on a line item basis and start plugging in nutrients on a line item basis that are going to affect um, these counts in, in a positive way. And then the th theory, of course, would be that when in doing so, um, these patients are feeling better and feeling more energy and perhaps even reversing uh, either a diagnosed or undiagnosed disease when they came in. That's, That's that what I'm trying to do. Pre and post testing of the same blood work <laughs> that the medical doctor is going to use and just use natural supplements to try and make mm -hmm. the effect. Now, now um, what are some of the conditions that you, you Notice Let's you get a red flag. Ones. Let's go with the big ones high cholesterol, diabetes, and some like hardcore inflammation like rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. types. We'll talk about those three for today. Okay. That'll be enough information, okay. but diabetes and cholesterol definitely. And those are big, and those are the biggies. And those are, I'm telling you right now, not too hard to fix. But we got to take a little bit long, bigger snapshot of what the blood work is. And this is the biggest thing that we do differently is we take a lot of blood work to see where is the problem coming from. It's not just to know that you have high cholesterol. Hmm. What's causing the high cholesterol, right? Really? Right. That's wow. what we're trying to go so after. So what can you determine through this blood work uh, about cholesterol, for instance? So we know that cholesterol is made in the liver, right? 95% hmm. of the blood cholesterol that you see is based from the liver manufacturing its own cholesterol. Not too much is from the dietary aspect okay. of it. And that was revealed in that big, uh, you know, Greenland Inuit Eskimos where they were doing, you know, meat eaters versus vegetarians, mm -hmm. and they had about the same blood levels of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So that was the big study to show it doesn't matter really what you're mm -hmm. eating so much. Natural ranges are pretty consistent. But we can take someone with a high cholesterol, let's say in the 400s, which we have a Ooh. patient right in front of us here, and in only 37 days or so, we had it down from 400 down to 192. And that was not with taking prescription no drugs? No prescription wow. medications. Well, let's I, touch back on it in just a second, because I, I just want to back up and make sure that <clears throat> people understand uh, the premise of blood work in general. You mentioned <clears throat> arthritis, which is something that you're going to see a lot. Um, what would be high on somebody's blood? Because we can get back to cholesterol in just sure, a minute. Sure, sure. Yeah. But what would be high on, say, an arthritis? What, what, what you see, you'll see markers of infl uh, inflammation in the body through the blood work. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What would some of those markers be? Something called ESR, or okay. sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, which is a big mm. one when it comes to heart disease now. Heart disease, Everybody's right. talking about CRP, C-reactive protein, as a marker for inflammation, and specifically cardiovascular inflammation. Mm. Uh, things like creatine kinase, muscle inflammation, or how much muscle destruction, LDH, um, those are enzymes in the body that show what's breaking down and what's building back up and it gives you kind of a rate of how the body's handling that stuff. Tissue destruction versus tissue healing. 
Do you mind if we wait on the on the cholesterol? Because I know we're going to be yeah, talking about it in, back, in yeah. a later segment. But but let's talk about another huge problem, and that's blood sugar, diabetes, high blood sugar. Do you see that? How common is that? It's on the rise, skyrocketing. I don't know what kind of term you want to put it on, but we're just getting bigger Epidemic and fatter. Epidemic, <laughs> you know, weight gain and blood sugar regulation. Uh, but the problem is, a lot of times in the beginning stages, people don't know. I'd say over half the people with diabetes don't know they have it. And you want to see that, that you do a fasting glucose? We do a fasting glucose test, but even a more important test than just fasting glucose is something called a hemoglobin A1C, mm. which is a two-month moving average of how your blood sugar is. So you can't cheat the number oh. if you do two or three good days of eating. Hmm. You need to do something either really good or really bad for two months to get this thing to show. Wow. So over a consistent hmm. period of time, we don't want this thing to raise. And, and you'll see in the ranges here, right now the, the medical doctors, anything over 5.9 from this lab specifically is considered you know, um, a diabetes. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, that is for the, the <coughs> hemoglobin A1C. A1C level, yeah. And glucose, fasting glucose, they want to be under we, I like to keep it around 80 to 95-ish region, mm -hmm. but the medical doctors, you know, they're kind of saying 100, 110 is kind of when they're getting uh, a little bit upset. Used to be 115. Used to be 115, yeah. 120. They're kind of narrowing a and little bit. And now they're saying 110, bit. you're borderline, yeah. that kind of thing. They're trying to do yeah. good, at least they're understanding. We don't want this thing to get out of control very exactly. fast because it's a devastating problem. Dr. Smith, how about, I know Dr. Mercola is big on this, uh, and I'm just kind of looking for it here and trying to talk at the same time. Sure. Insulin, do you measure blood insulin levels on this? I don't measure, it's an easy test that we can easily add to the thing, but it's not gonna give us any more information than just testing the hemoglobin A1C. Yeah, your insulin levels, if they're 20s and 30s, you want a lower number if possible, but if you think of the liver as being the primary organ that you have to concentrate on, not necessarily the pancreas in treating, um, naturally what I do, trying to treat this problem, it's more going after the liver, not just the pancreas. But it would be, that would be, a, be a picture very... of pancreatic health as far as if that number's high, that means your pancreas is really on overdrive, right? Yeah, it's kicking insulin. in, doing way too much than it's mm -hmm. supposed to, and it only has kind of a natural shelf life, and the more that you try and use it, the less it has for its longevity. Uh, Dr. Smith, as a, as a holistic doctor, mm -hmm. do you look for things that a normal medical doctor might not be so concerned about? Uh, yeah, that's why I do a lot more blood work on a simple quote unquote case than what normal medical doctors would do because they go, yeah, well, we want to check cholesterol and they get a little snapshot. Lipid but I want to lipid yeah. panel, whatever, just total and maybe an HDL. I want to see how is the liver, how is the kidney, how is everything. Here. Good. Well, hold that thought because okay. we're having a great discussion, but it is time for a quick break. And when we return, we will talk more about cholesterol. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more on Balanced Health. <laughs> 